He sees you when you're sleeping and he knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Because Santa Claus is coming to town. We picture Santa as a solly large man in a red coat with a sleigh led by flying reindeer. But where did this come from? Who was the real Saint Nicholas? And what other versions from other cultures are out there? We'll explore this today. John, I'm immediately more creeped out than I was in the spooky Halloween special. Merry Christmas, boy. Merry Christmas, boy. Welcome to Cheeky Tales. What are we talking about this week? Um, we're talking about Santa Claus. The ultimate creep. <laughs> so you were creeped out already? No, look, the idea of Santa Claus is lovely, right? This jolly bloke who's like, here's a present. But just what you said in that intro, <laughs> the first four lines, he, he knows when you're sleeping. Yeah. He knows when you're awake. Yeah. He knows when you've been bad. Yeah. And he knows when you've been good. That's creepy, right? Like, this is a guy that's constantly stalking everyone on the planet. I guess when you put it that way, yeah, but that's yeah. What, I've grown, what we've grown up with. So yeah, and it, think about that. Your parents are like, hey, there's this guy that keeps looking through the windows, peeping through the curtains. <laughs> yeah, think about that. All the things you did it, as a kid. It's, it's hard to think about it after some of the other things I've read about while researching mm. this week. So we'll, we'll, Yeah, because I'll bet it doesn't get better than that. Okay, yeah, so- this is your baseline. Oh, oh no! <laughs> this is your baseline creepiness. Yeah. Well, let's see where the creepiness is. If it goes down, or like for Santa, I feel if like it goes down by the end of the podcast. Look, I hope so. I hope that the mythical Speedy Boy Santa is less creepy by the end of the episode. But I like. We were talking before we started recording, and you haven't delved into Mrs. Claus, the world's loneliest woman. No. Or. The elves. I think, who, they, I think they get a mention, but I haven't really gone into detail. Look, let's be honest. The elves are probably slave labor. I don't think there's a union. I don't think Santa's given them many benefits. <laughs> I don't think they're unionized, but I'm pretty sure they enjoy it. Like, I, I think. Well, that's just Stockholm syndrome. Oh, yeah. You got a point. That's, Poor syndrome. Yeah. Not good, is it? No. Yeah. Now you're thinking about Santa a different way. Anyway, boy, it's Christmas in a few days. It is. Yeah. So when this comes out, it's Christmas in four days time. So like I said. Merry Christmas from Cheeky Tales. More important before that. Um, no, nothing's ringing a bell. What, no, what would be? So. Okay, uh, you're not gonna. If you're not gonna dunk the layup, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be the Scotty Pippen to you. <laughs> no, it's your birthday. That's right. Now, I, I'm big day. I'm nervous to give it a date because it's being recorded. And if I get Didn't it wrong, we 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 doxed your birthday with the um, balloon fest. Yeah. yeah. Well, you doxed your birthday. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not going to dox mine. All right, so you don't want to give it a date? I'll tell you. It's soon. Right, yeah. Okay. Well, happy birthday for that Cheers, soon boy. date. And it's my last 20th. And again, Merry Christmas mm. to all. Merry Christmas to all. Tales. So, I guess, are you feeling festive? There's a tree that I'm looking at. I, I did see the tree. The yeah. tree has gone up since our last recording, and it's yeah. a white, snowy It is a tree. white Christmas in this house. And let me tell you, cats love it. It's quite pretty. Actually, it is nice. Yeah. Really nice. You should touch it. It's not nice to touch. No, I don't want to touch it. It feels weird. It's very well decorated. I'm going to say yeah. that. So I'm going to give the uh, compliment to Brie because I doubt you did Absolutely any of that none. I did. I put some of them on there. I purchased and uh, designed none of them. No, I know which ones you put on there. The ones that are way too close to the other. Well, look, that's it's probably true. Factor zero. Um, <laughs> and I think I only put them all on one side. So, you know, what are you going to do? The side closest to the wall. Yeah, whatever. Um, I'm feeling a bit festive. You're feeling a bit festive? So what, what do you think about um, when Christmas is mentioned? Heat. Well, here Summer in, heat. Here in Australia, it is, it is a hot Christmas, usually. Hot Christmas. Uh, Christmas at the beach, backyard cricket. Hot Santa Christmas. Uh, <laughs> bringing that one back. Yeah. Obviously, for us, um, one of the big things about Christmas is Christ in, it, in its name. That's, Christ. It's big for us. Mass. Um. But we're, we're talking about Santa today. Um, have you ever seen Santa, boy? Uh, in a shopping centre, yeah. No, no, as in not a, not a dude in a no, red suit. No, that was the real Santa. Helping, okay, so you've seen the real Santa. I've seen was, the real Santa. He was in a shopping centre. Okay, well, maybe later on um, you can tell us that I story. I was walking around the outside of my local and he was having a smoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's having a cheeky yeah. ziggy. 
Yeah, sucking down a dart. <laughs> Punching a dart. Santa's Punching a smoker. A diary. Yeah. So that's a scoop. That's a cheeky tail scoop. No wonder he can get to all yeah. those. All those houses. Yeah. There's, there's, Wouldn't there's you a, think he'd be puffed? Hey, good one. Yeah. There's also like a chimney, a chimney joke in there somewhere. I don't get it. Smoke. Still don't. You need to explain it more. No, I'm not. I'm not doing that. <laughs> right. So Santa Claus, as we know him today. Oh, you're not gonna, you're not gonna let me do a pun. Well, I was waiting for it, and it was just dead air. So I would just continue to. Um. It's tougher oh, than you think. Please, please, please edit in some crickets just there because that yeah. was such a long pause. Uh, I, I mean, there's, with, a, there's a few layups, but I don't want to give them to you because then- Because then you're the Scotty Pippen. Yeah. Yeah. And nobody wants to be the Scotty Pippen. Um, you were the Scotty Pippen the other week. When? Oh, you gave me, like, you kept on oh, rolling yeah. off for the Formula yeah, Oh, man. I- um, Yeah, I was- wait, I was bringing- Okay, yeah. go on. I seen- Ooh. I seen a video- Yeah. Today, and it was like in the, um, so last week's episode was Formula One of the 1976. That's the one. Season. And that came up because this year has been honestly the best season of Formula One. Now, was that the last race of the season? Yes, last it night? was. Yeah. And so it was also deciding the winner. Yes. Okay. They were on equal points coming in. So. And uh, it's been a like pretty rough season. They've been punting each other, the other off the track left and right. They've been fighting pretty hard. Um and so, yeah, it looked like a big deal. Hamilton's come back from like a long way behind in the last three races. The clip I saw it was like in the um, crew area. Yeah. And I don't know if it was the head of the crew. Mm. Something's happened and he's just gone, what, what, Max, that's, what, you can't do that. Like, what, that's yeah. not like, that no, was I, have, I have no yeah. idea what happened, but yeah. he was blowing up. He was very agitated and upset over whatever yeah. happened. So I, I stayed up to watch it. And in Australia, that means race start at 11 p.m. How long did the race go for? Uh, I went to bed at 10 to 1. Oof. So I'm running on fumes here. But man. So high energy one today, guys. We'll that's why I'm sounding a bit like <laughs> flat. That's it. And that's why Ho Ho Go is the best I can come up with. <laughs> is that your pun? Ho Ho Go. Pun. Ho Ho Go, boy. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there was some sort of pr- <laughs> present or gift you could have just. Uh, a- look. Uh, maybe your maybe on a day where I've had a solid eight hours, <laughs> but not on a day where I've had. A non-solid four. Right. So Santa Wrap Cla- it up. There you go. That, Shoot it leave, down the chimney. Leave, leave that one for the end. Santa Claus, as we know him today, is a bit of, is a bit of a mixture of historical figures. Mixed bag, is he? And folklore, yes. Yeah. Maybe so, a mixed sack. May, mixed sack. That would have been a good one. I'm warming up. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Saint Nicholas is one of those historical figures. He was a fourth century- Got a notification there, boy. I did. Mm. Facebook. Don't have your phone on silent there, no, do we? Forgot about it. Yeah, that's a that's a good re- recording faux pas. Yep, rookie error. Yep. He was a fourth century Christian bishop of Myra. Myra. Yep. Mm. Don't know where that. Uh, I think that's like you, modern day Turkish now. Turkish. Turkish. Not in Turkey. Turkish. Turkish. Well, I don't think those. What came are. first, Turkey the uh, country or Turkey the animal? I'm going to say the animal. No. So. Yeah, when America was being settled. 20 minutes in, we're going off yeah, topic again. <laughs> again. Just bef- like as America was being settled, the Turkish Empire was like um, quite popular for trade and they would trade these like fowls, so these birds. Um, so when the settlers got to America, they're like, oh, these birds kind of look like those birds that the Turks would sell. So they started calling them turkeys. Yeah, right. Mm. Fun fact. Mm. Delete it or keep it. Keep it. That w- I didn't say delete it or keep it at the start. Well, I'm, I'm just tagging that on at the end. That's not how that works. Okay. Anyway, St. Nicholas was famous for uh, a generous, like he was a generous gift, gift. Uh, gift, gift. Yep. Are you sure you slept last <sighs> night? No, I didn't. I was not playing Halo. St. Nicholas was famous for his generous gifts to the poor. In particular, presenting the three impoverished daughters of a devout Christian with dowry so they didn't have to become working girls. What's that mean? Well, I changed it from <laughs> the actual word to working girls, so it was a bit more PG. Yeah. Um, they went Ladies to- of the night. Uh, they worked the night shift at the um, charity soup kitchen. Yeah. We'll That's what that. they did. Uh, St. Nicholas is the patron of, or well, he's the patron saint of many things, including, <laughs> do you want to have a stab at any of these? Patron saint of ladies of the night. No, uh, no, he's not. Oh, they don't have a patron saint to that, do they? No. Oh, well, I'm going to say that he's I mean, the patron. They, yeah. could have, they could have a patron saint of that, but he, he's might. not the patron saint okay. of that. Is he the patron saint of indicating the correct way when you go onto a roundabout? 
Actually, yes. Really? No. <laughs> yeah, so. Is he the patron saint of um, when you're in the office at work? And like, I think you get very specific. <laughs> and you've got that moment where like you open the dishwasher and it's not stacked properly and you're just like, come on. Is he the patron saint of that feeling? Uh, I'm going to say no, but that sounds okay. like a deep cut that some of the people in the office might. I just feel like that's a very universal annoyance for a lot of people like me. Okay. Who open a dishwasher and see a bowl where a plate should be and a plate at the front. And you're like, what are you people doing? Have you no order? I got up. So he's not the patron saint no. of that. Okay. No, he's not. He is the patron saint of- Sunflowers. Sailors. Okay. Merchants. Sailors? Sailors, yep. Okay. Merchants, archers, repentant thieves, children- Not thieves, repentant thieves. Repentant thieves, yep. Children. Children. That makes sense. Brewers. Oh. Porn brokers. Okay. So that's like cash converters. Yes. Unmarried people. (laughs) Singles. He's the singles table. (laughs) Well, maybe there's in a couple that just not Patron saint of Tinder. (laughs) <laughs> well, <laughs> and, and and the patron saint of students through patron saint of <laughs> you up <laughs> Netflix and chill. <laughs> uh, good old sick Nick. All right, the creep factor's going down. The good bro factor's going right up. It is, and he's the yeah. the patron saint for students in various cities across countries uh, and countries okay. in Europe. And so mine weren't very direct, but that one was. <laughs> he died on December 6th. Okay. 343. All right. So not Christmas Day. Uh, no. December 6th is important. So there is also an interesting story about in uh, 1087. Yep. Some Italian merchants removed the major bones of his skeleton right. from his sarcophagus. So which, the major bones, not all of them. No, they left the, right. the smaller bones. Um, and they placed those major ones in a church dedicated to him in Venice. Okay. Uh, the other bones remained in like the original church building he was in in, in Maya. So there's he's it's um, like approved that, that he has two sacred actually resting places. Okay. Official places. Yeah. Because they divvied him up. They divvied him up. So yeah. that's not really got anything to do with Christmas. It was just interesting that someone stole half his skeleton. That is actually pretty interesting. I don't, I don't know why they would want to, but. Yeah. Why would you want just part of it though? Um, yeah, I don't know. Obviously the skull's probably, it's just weird. You want to take someone's skull anyway, like. It's a bit, bit off. Yeah. So, uh, another name for Santa Claus, Father Christmas. Mm. You may have heard of that. Um, this was based on Henry VIII. Henry VIII, eh? Hey? Yes. Yeah. Um. Big old jolly Saint Henry. Bit, bit funny, um, for Henry VIII to pop up in this episode because. Originally, this, that was going to be your first topic. Yeah, originally this episode was going to be on Henry VIII, so stay tuned for that. He'll come back for sure. Um, but back in the 16th century, um, Henry VIII was pictured as a large man in green or scarlet robes lined with fur. Mm-hmm. Apparently, he typified the spirit of good cheer at Christmas, bringing peace, joy, good food and wine, and merriment. Okay. Which is a bit of a counter to some of the stories I've heard of the old Henry VIII. Yep, bit of a bit of a bastard. Bit of a bastard, but uh, obviously from wow. some of the <laughs> some of the stories, he did enjoy good food and wine. He was, I'm sure a, that he a, did because he a was large a large fella, a large boy. He was quite um, skinny and good looking in his youth days. So, so was he? Some of the pre research I've done for the next episode. So that's kind of where the Father Christmas name comes from. Sure. Another one is Sinterklaas. Sinterklaas. Have you heard of Sinterklaas? I have heard of Sinterklaas. Yes, this comes from the Nordic region of Northern Europe. One of my favourite regions in the world. Was that? I really thought you were about to snot rock on the couch. <laughs> and I was just going to be like, get out. I'm doing this podcast alone. <laughs> I wouldn't do such a thing. I'd spill beer and water, but I'm not going to snot rock on your couch. Jeez. Sheesh. Uh, so in the Netherlands, Sinterklaas. Sinterklaas. Remains the predominant gift giver. Yeah. Okay. In December. All right. That's a good time of year. Yep. So 36% of gifts are... Uh, Presented uh, on Sinterklaas Eve. Sure. Or the day itself, which is December 6th. Right. Okay. Well, is that because of our friend, the patron saint of Tinder? Yes. Okay. That, that is because of, because that's, uh, December 6th is St. Nicholas's name day. So I don't know if that yeah. is because that day he died or, mm. but yeah, it's related to St. Nicholas. Okay. While the 25th is used by another 21% of people in the Netherlands and sure. uh, another 26 give, Gifts on both days. 
Okay. I know that doesn't add up to 100%, so I guess the other percentage just- They're just like, yeah, whatever. They just don't give gifts at all. 13th. There's also uh, correlations in Santa's story with Odin, another Nordic figure. Uh, He would ride across the sky leading the wild hunt on his eight-legged steer, Slefnir. Slefnir. Yes. So uh, I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but that's as good as I can get. Sure. So I believe that's like a horse or a reindeer, but it's eight-legged. So I guess that's the the kind of idea of, I think that's where the reindeer started coming in through Odin because of that. Many feats. Uh, apparently, he would also bring people, like, bring his people gifts, um, and he also had the, the, the look, like, Odin's look is, like, oldish dude, big, long, white beard. Chubby. But he's said to wear uh, blue robes and a hood. Okay, sure. So, in the British colonies of the United States, mm-hmm. uh, British and Dutch versions of the gift giver merged further. So, all those ones we just went over, they kind of all merged together in this time. Um, for example- uh, in Washington, Irvine's History of New York, which was in 1809, Santa Claus was angelicized into Santa Claus. Angelicized? Well, that's what I got written down. That was, right. that was the word used on the uh, historical website I got the information from. I wonder if it's like anglicized. I think that's what that yeah. word is. Anglicized. Yeah. Well, I just assumed it was because it was capitalized. Yeah. So it was, for, I guess that's what transformed into Santa Claus, Santa mm. Claus from Santa Cl- to Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Uh, so this uh, Santa Claus was a name first used in the US press in 1773. Um, but he lost his bishop's apparel and was first pictured as a thick bellied Dutch sailor with a pipe in a green winter coat. Green? But, yeah, I have seen Santa Claus in green, in green yeah. clothes. Like that is an image I have seen before. Okay. I feel like. I say I've seen like a green Santa Claus on a Coke commercial, but that doesn't sound right. Mm. Anyway. Okay. Irving's book was a parody of Dutch culture that was present in New York. Sure. And much of this portrait is his invention. Irving's interpretation of Santa Claus was part of a broader movement to tone down the increasingly wild Christmas celebrations of the era. You're going to love this. All right. The uh, wild celebrations included... Aggressive home invasions <laughs> under the guise of wassailing. Okay. So people are just like smacking down the door. They're like, Merry Christmas. Uh, uh, yeah. S- uh, substantial premarital sex. Okay. So St. Nick's about it. <laughs> Patron saint of wink, wink. Which led to a lot of shotgun weddings. Okay. Yeah. And public display, uh, public displays of sexual deviancies. Deep- wow. It's a raunchy episode now. It is, but- this, Didn't expect this, this out of Santa Claus. Apparently, this is the way people celebrated Christmas. Yeah, just out in the streets, being single. Getting it on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the celebrations of the era were ridiculed by both upper-class merchants and Christian purists. Yeah, like. I can see why. So, uh, we're going to move forward a little bit now. So, around 1823, uh, an anonymous poem was published in a New York paper. The poem was I called in 1823. Yep. What was it called? Um, hey, don't um, bang on yellow snow. And that's got to do with Christmas because- Well, you just told me about all the raunchy stuff. Okay, though, all right. So the poem was called A Visit from St. Nicholas. Sounds about the same. But it's now known as yeah. The Night Before Christmas. Oh, mm. okay. I was, so this I- is where like everyone in the house is asleep except that creepy mouse. Yep. Yeah. And it Wait, was- is the mouse asleep in that poem? Well, it's not stirring. Not even a mouse. Yeah. Yeah, right. So everyone's asleep. Yep. Except Santa. Santa creeping He's through. He's watching you. Yep. Through the window. Creaking through the door. I bet you he wears sneakers. Well, if he's going to sneak. Mm. Uh, it was here that all those previous variations that uh, we've covered rolled into one to form the foundation- Spooky Santa, yep. Of the modern Santa. So like like I said, the reindeer from Odin, the, the, the merriment and joy of- Father Yeah, Christmas. so this bloke's just made up Santa. Pretty much. Not really. He's like grabbed a whole bunch of stuff, made Santa. Yep. Okay. Um, this was also the first naming of Santa's reindeers. Yeah. Do you- How know- many do you know? Uh-huh. I know Dasher, Prancer, Donna, Blitzen. That's it. I did read them and I thought I had them in here, but I don't. So, Rudolph. Oh, obviously Rudolph. Yeah. What an idiot. Donna. Blitzen. Blitzen. Prancer. Prancer. Dasher. Dasher. Comet. Comet. Cupid. No. How many have we named? Six? That's six. Five. Well, that's five, really. There's nine. 
There's nine? Yeah. Oh, who can be bothered? What I did read is that Donna and Blitzen weren't their original names. Okay. What it, were they? It was Dunmar and sure. something else, but it was like the Nordic words for thunder and lightning. Okay. And they're now my favorite two reindeer because it's like thunder and lightning. Yeah. Yeah. Thunder. Oh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Copyright strike. <laughs> All I really want, really want for Christmas. Oh, I shot us. <laughs> I played that for Kirstie this afternoon and she yeah. was singing it all afternoon. Yep. It'll get you. Oh. I listened to it once today and it's been <laughs> waiting the whole time. So people, uh, if you want to look it up, look up Little John's All I Want, I want for, for Christmas. Christmas. Featuring the Kool-Aid Man. Yep. All I really want, really want for Christmas. <laughs> so throughout, good. throughout the decades, more information on Santa was popularized. The workshop in the North Pole, the elves making toys and Mrs. Claus. Yeah. Right up until <laughs> about 1930. Sorry. <laughs> That song by Lil John. Okay. <laughs> you know, the, song, the lyric is all I want, all I really want for Christmas is, is everything, everything on, on my, my list, list, baby. It's like, yeah, obviously, dude. <laughs> There's no deeper meaning. He's just like, give me all this stuff, man. And how many times does he say, all I want, all I really want for all Christmas? I want, all I want, all I really want, all I want, really want for Christmas. Christmas. And it's, it's Little Christmas. John, so it's like, Christmas. Yeah. And you and I do the same thing every time you say, move your whole body. Yeah. Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> uh, all right, back to it. So, uh, up, so we're in the 1930s now. Yep. Uh, when the image that we have today, big dude in red suit, yep. was further popularized. By the Coca-Cola by, company. By the Coca-Cola company. Yeah. I was going to ask you one. Which, which one it was, yeah. but it's Coca-Cola. Yep. The imaging was so popular that urban legends started that Santa was actually invented by Coca-Cola. Yeah. That's well, why he's red and white. Or that... Colors. that is why Santa wears red and white. Yeah. It's not true. Isn't it? No. Oh, right. Santa does not wear red and white because it's from Coke. He was wearing that beforehand. Prior to the 1930s. Yep. Okay. All right. Pe- All right. Pepsi used the same imaging of Santa in the 40s and 50s. Sure. Um, but Coke wasn't the first beverage company to use Santa's image. Oh, who was? White Rock Beverages used okay. the red and white suited claws in 1915 to sell mineral water and in 1923 to sell ginger ale. Oh, ginger ale, hey? Yep. Okay. On the hard stuff. I like a good ginger ale. And in case you were wondering, mm-hmm. Rudolph popped up on the scene in 1939 and was immortalized by the song in 1949. Okay. That's more recent than I would have thought. It is quite recent, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that's the Santa Claus, the one we know today. There's actually quite a lot of history. Like, I've edited that out to yeah for time-wise, which we've caught on a bit anyway. Yeah, um, look, to be honest, St. Nick is- uh, he drew me back to liking the whole Santa Claus deal and being a little bit less creeped out. Right. Seeing as the patron saint of a few fun things. Yeah. <laughs> There's also a, a quite a lot of history on Christmas Day itself as well. Yeah. So that, I don't know if that's going to be nec- next year, next year's episode. All right. We'll do the history of that. The episode 30 of, odd. That'd be another 25. Oh, Six. Yeah. Uh, so now. 39. So now. 40. It'll be episode 40. So, so now what I'm going to cover is I'm going, going through like Google searches for Santa Claus. Sure. I come across a dude who's doing research on people who had seen the real Santa Claus, much like mm. you, punching a dart outside punching Coles. Punching a dart outside Woolies. <laughs> it was more, it was more outside like the bathrooms of Woolies, but whatever. So I've got some stories here. Yeah. Um, some quoted stories from people. Okay, so these are people who genuinely believe they have seen- The real Santa Claus, yep. Okay, so these are adults- Yep. Who have gotten to the point in life where they know that Santa's- no, If there's was- children listening, your mum and dad lied to you. They've gotten to the point where Santa's not real. Okay, so warning, we'll give that warning. We should give that warning at the oh, top of the I feel like episode. if they're playing this episode, they should know by now. If you, do, if you got your kid to sit around and listen to this episode where Through we talk the about the talk. history of Santa- and get past the bit where we talk about people banging in the streets. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is your fault. This is you're the, the problem. This is where you need to stop. Santa's not real. <laughs> yeah. If well, you've gotten to this point and this is the bit you're upset by, <laughs> baby, you got worse problems. <laughs> I have had my kids ask to listen to this episode. Have and they? Like, no. You're not yeah, this to- isn't the one. <laughs> Sorry, kiddos. We'll go back and listen to Formula One. We can listen to that episode. Yeah. So, first story I've got here is from Scotland in 1978. Okay. An old friend came to see me a couple of weeks ago. We lost touch years ago. Yeah. But he managed to trace me and he brought me a Christmas card. 
Hmm. After a few minutes, I asked him if he remembered the Christmas Eve about 30 year, years ago when we were outside our houses. We grew up next to each other. Okay. It must have been around 7.30 p.m. on a clear night when we suddenly heard bells or bells in the distance getting closer real fast. All right. As we both looked up, there was the reindeer, the sleigh, and Santa flying very fast and low over my house. It was brief, but we both ran to tell our families. Of course, everyone laughed, but I tell you, it was real. Okay, so when they say fast and low, are we talking plane fast? Well, if it's a plane, how low would you reckon the plane would be? And why would they be bells? Like, or are we talking Belfast? Oh, I don't think we're talking about Belfast. Just hang on a minute. Where is Belfast? Is, that, is it in Scotland? I would have said Turkey, but <laughs> probably wrong. What? Why is a movie the first thing that comes up? I want the place. I think it is in Scotland. It, oh, oh, come on. How have I not? Or is it Ireland? Oh, I think it might be Ireland. Northern Ireland. All right. Well, look. Close, but no cigar boy. I'll take, the, I'll take the points for partial credit. There's a little bit more. So when my friend turned up, I asked him if he remembered, and he said, of course he did. But yep. he didn't like telling people about it now. I okay. can't imagine why. That was Probably from- because he's worked out that it was a plane. Well, that was from Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, right. if you're out there, there's your story. Next one I've got here. You know, we have had a listener from, on, from Northern oh, Ireland. Yeah? Okay. So, well, this thanks, was, Jimmy. That was from Scotland. Was it? Yep. Oh, okay. I did say that. If you're from Belfast, write in. <laughs> <laughs> I was five years old and I was in my room when I heard shuffling in the living room. Yeah. I got up and peered around the doorway where I saw a man in a Santa suit standing in front of the Christmas tree. Okay. He must have felt my presence because he turned around and looked at me. He didn't look jolly or kind and happy like you would expect Santa Claus to look. He looked kind of eerie like he was staring into my soul. Oh, gee, I wonder why. He's a grown man that's broken into your house <laughs> after watching you for a whole year. Yeah. Of course, he's a bit eerie and probably a bit irritated. Imagine having to do your whole year's work in one day. How annoying. Yeah, but what about for the rest of the year? That'd be pretty sweet. I don't think it would be. Automatically, I ran into my parents' room and hid under the covers. Imagine the amount of admin he has to do. (laughs) The flight clearances. Flight clearances. Just lists. uh, Checking them more than once. (laughs) Twice even. (laughs) Managing the union uprisings from the elves. What's Mrs. Claus up to? Is she on the peach cherries, uh, peach schnapps again? This year would have been even worse with the, um, like, just getting materials because of COVID and all the- like, imagine how much. How's he? He's going to have to quarantine for two weeks before. We- <laughs> Just aggressively rolled my eyes at that one. Automatically, I ran into my parents' room and hid under the covers. Yep. I don't know why I was so scared at the time, but I wrote it off as a dream for a while before I forgot completely about it. Okay. Years later, I remembered it. I thought it could have been a burglar, but when I asked my parents, nothing was ever missing from that apartment. The only time we were ever robbed was when we moved later on. The only explanation I have now is that it was some kind of apparition. Right. That was signed Anna. Or it was a dream. Okay. Possibly. Mm, Maybe had a bit too much cough syrup. But she said she was five. So usually like, do you remember anything from when you were five years old? Five? Yeah. Yeah. But what do you remember? You remember like important things. You don't just remember day to day stuff. Not really. I remember dumb stuff. Okay. All right. We might have to get into that at some point. Yeah. I don't remember my first day at school, but I remember- Preparing for my first day of school. I remember my first day of school. Yeah, I don't. Sarah A. Okay. Who says her signing happened at a very young age, but that it has stayed with her into adulthood as clear as day. Mm. On this evening, Sarah was helping. uh, Sarah wasn't helping. Sarah was sleeping on the floor as her aunt had been visiting and taken her bed. As we know, he knows when you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. Because of this, she was unable to really get into a deep sleep. And around 2.30 a.m., she noticed a faint glow coming from the crack under the door. Okay. She got up and wandered to the door, opened it, and looked out into the hallway, saying of what she saw next. When I fully opened my eyes, I could see that Santa was standing in my door with a mystical, magical glow around him. It was silver and gold and glittery. Santa looked right at me, and without moving his mouth, he said to me, Now you know you're supposed to be asleep while I'm here, don't you? I told him that I knew that I was supposed to be asleep, but how could I? He told me, Close your eyes and at least to pretend. What are you doing? <laughs> I've been doing different methods of taking drugs just while you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we had sex and now we've got drugs. Well, oh, just these, people for the are, these people are like off their chops, obviously. I was shocked. I knew this could be a dream, but I knew I that shocked. I was awake. I'd only taken 15 <laughs> eggies. <laughs> people have told me maybe it was my father and maybe it was. How we got the hallway to glow with glitter would be beyond me. 
But as far as I'm concerned, it was 100% the spirit of Santa Claus. It was the beautiful golden glow around the man in the big red suit that told me it couldn't possibly be my father. But, like, how do these people explain the fact that they don't just get Santa presents all the time? I don't know. Like, why? Then what do they think everyone else in the world is doing when they're like, oh, yeah, I got my kids this from Santa? Like, why are they not just like, but Santa's real? Like, what's wrong with these people? Just let me finish. It was. I have seen the Easter Bunny, though. I have, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You have to tell us that story. It was glittery like a parade. Obviously, I was kidding. Yeah, I know. (laughs) I really wanted to call you out on it. Idiot. But the pieces were not falling to the ground. I am now 41 years old, and I still believe that I saw him. Okay. So, yeah, there's a few I've handpicked out of. There's more than three. There's lots and lots and lots of stories from people. I've got one last one here. This one's a bit of fun. You're, you're going to love this one. I heard this story from my husband years ago. He was small, probably around six years old. His family was spending Christmas at the old family homestead. He was in bed when he heard a noise outside and ran to the window to see what it was. What should he see but a fat, white, bearded man walking through the swirling snow towards the house. He crept downstairs to get a good look at Santa. Okay. I thought it was Santa creeping. <laughs> no. Okay. Yep. How disappointed he was when he discovered it was only his grandfather in his red union suit on his way back from the outhouse. <laughs> nice. Yep. And that's what I feel most of those stories are. <laughs> Just someone going to take a midnight dump. <laughs> Leave it a different type of present. <laughs> it's a Christmas log. It's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, that's the happy gift giving side of the man in the red suit. <laughs> What about the other side? You've been bad. Yeah. <laughs> You've been real bad. You've been real bad. No coal for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're another kind of rock. <sighs> real soft. Maybe soft. It could be hard. <laughs> Depends on the diet. Anyway, what about the other side that right. only just in the last few years has gotten a bit more popular again? Mm. Santa's got his grunge side. Yeah, Krampus. Krampus. Have you heard of Krampus, boy? I have heard of Krampus. What I, do you know of Krampus? I know that Krampus is like, he's another one of these like weird, like Scandinavian. Is he leaving turds? He's, I don't <laughs> think he's a turd one. He's more of a, more of a demon boy, isn't he? Uh, yeah, so he, you're right. He, he yeah. it's, it's a legend that comes from Central Europe, um, and he's described as half goat, half demon monster. Yeah, goat boy. Um, and he's actually a companion to St. Nicholas. Yeah. It's thought that he was part of pagan rituals for winter solace. The legend goes he is the son of Hell, the Norse god of the underworld. Okay. When Christianity spread through, like, spread through the area, um, he got associated with Christmas and the Catholic Church tried very hard to bear him for many years. Yeah, as I do. So apparently Krampus and St. Nick show up on December 5th, like mm. the evening, um, um, and that is, have its own name in some areas called Krampusnacht. Krampusnacht. Or Krampus Night. Krampusnacht. You probably got a better German accent. Than oh, Krampusnacht. <laughs> Klaus, <laughs> Krampusnacht. Oh. Or St. Nick, Krampusnacht. Oh, oh, St. Nick, come here, let me Krampusnacht. <laughs> I apologise to our German listeners. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Your language is hilarious. It is. It is quite funny. It's not funny. Uh, oh come on! Well, yeah, German's funny. Well, it has funny, funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also it can be very aggressive. Yeah, everything in it's aggressive. Krampusnacht. <laughs> not Krampusnacht. So while Saint Nicholas is the leaving the good stuff for nice kids, yeah, Krampus beats up the naughty children with branches <laughs> and sticks. <laughs> Damn you, take your Christmas beating. Pretty much. Uh, sometimes uh, it's- Krampus now, this kid. <laughs> sometimes it's said he eats naughty kids. Oh, jeez. Or takes them to hell. Like, oh, wow. How naughty are these kids been? I know. So on December 6th, is that date again? It yeah. seems to be a popular one in Central Europe. Children awake to find presents or nurse their injuries. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so mum and dad are taking out their frustrations in the night. Yeah, just whack, whack, whack. Oh, Krampus is coming soon. Oh, gotcha. Krampus got gotcha. you. Happy Krampus start. Oh, Krampus. <laughs> Oh, I don't know how you got injured. Oh, it must have been bad. <laughs> must have been a bad boy. Wasn't dad. 
There's, there was also something I was reading. Ich bin Krampus. <laughs> there was also something I was reading about. They would um, leave their shoes on the windowsills, and Krampus would leave like presents or coal in in the sh- okay. shoes or something like that. I'd, it was a weird little nugget of information. Yeah, they got some weird customs over there uh, in like Central Europe. So I love it. I would love to go do like a European Christmas. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Oh, there, oh, yeah. No. I, I, yeah. No. There's some weird stuff yeah. over there. Yeah. Um. So. Krampus is having a bit of a revival at the moment, um, mm. especially in Bavaria, uh, where they've been making traditional wooden masks. Sure. Um, and in 2019, there was reports of drunken and disorderly conduct by masked Krampuses in Austrian towns. Uh-oh. So people just running amok on Christmas Eve, dressed as yeah. Krampus. Oh, it's Krampus not. Oopsie. Oh, can't blame me. Uh, Krampus also got a movie in 2015. So I just wanted to bring up a movie in this podcast. Um, Which, was it called Krampus watched. or something? It was called Krampus. Yeah, okay. So that's Krampus. What about some other Christmas entities? Have you heard of any other Christmas time Christmas time entities? entities. Apart from um, Santa and- Well, there is- What about Fanta Claus? Do you remember Fanta Claus? I remember Fanta Claus. That's a deep cut for some people. Yeah, that's a deep cut. I don't even need a fake beard anymore. Anyway. <laughs> so one of the like three people to get that. John, <sighs> have you got anything on silent tonight? I don't know why my watch isn't on. Huh? So I come across this one. Um, and I'm going to love this section because there's a lot of names to pronounce. Okay. Grilia. 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 Iceland's yeah. Christmas witch. Nice. And she is a piece of work. So Christmas think- bitch. <laughs> <laughs> If you think Krampus is bad, whacking kids with sticks and stuff. Here we go. Let's get into this one. Yeah. So I've got a historical um, passage here. Okay. Um, and I quote, it says, down comes Grilia from the outer fields with yeah. 40 tails, a bag on her back. 40 tails. 40 tails. That's more than we've done. A, ba- a bag on her back. <laughs> <laughs> got me. You got me. Got him. T-A-I-L-S. Not, mm. not our tails. Okay. Are these more tails than we've done yeah. for sure? Yeah. A bag on her back, a sword in her hand, coming to carve out the stomachs of children who cry for meat during Lent. Oh, all right. So you, you're feasting for a Big Mac and down comes this <laughs> Christmas witch and she guts you. During Lent. Now, I'm assuming you know what Lent is. Lent, yeah. Lent is the- um, Isn't Lent- Lent's most- I remember Lent It's for Easter time. Easter, yeah. Yeah, it's the uh, 40 days of fasting that- Yeah. For Easter. Yeah. So- um, these- I just remember people being like, oh, I'm giving up. Fish for Lent. And it's like, you don't eat fish. That's not Lent. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm giving up eating chocolate on Wednesdays for Lent. Like, <laughs> all right. You're going to do it for like two and a half years because it's meant to be for 40. I just, yeah. It's so, just dumb stuff like that I hear people do. So, th- there was earliest poems for Agrilia was around the 13th century. Sure. Um, but it wasn't until the 17th century that she become associated with Christmas. Okay. So, I think that's where the Lent part comes into it. Um, so, what does she look like? There are many accounts. Um, she's been said to be a giantess, an ogress. Okay. Uh, one rhyme says that she has 15 tails. Right. Each holds 100 bags with 20 children in each bag. Whew. Uh, do you want to do some quick math, boy? That's 200. How many was it? 15, 15 tails with 100 bags oh. with 20 kids in each bag. So, so it's 15 by 100. So that's what? 1,500. Quick math. And then 20 by that. Yep. So 1,500 by 20. So that's, well, by 10 would be 15,000. So by 20 is 30,000. 30,000. Yeah. So apparently she can have 30,000 kids. Cool. And uh, they're doomed Strong. to be- They're doomed to be a feast for the family trolls. Where are the trolls? What? Trolls? Yep. For the trolls family. So she's called a troll. So- Ah, oh, so, so Bill and Linda troll. Yep. And their children, yep. um, Steve- They're having 30,000 kids for Christmas dinner. Steve and Terry Troll and sure, yeah, I, I gave up on another name. Yeah, so f- for her family. So um, another poem describes Grulia. Yeah, eyes in the back of her head. Okay, ears that hang so low that they hit her nose. <laughs> a matted beard, blackened oh. teeth, and hooves. Yeah, just shaking the head and the ears and just whacking itself in the nose. Would you like some tea, Grulia? No. <laughs> 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 So believe it or not, boy, yes, I said Grilly has a family. Yep. Okay. And even a pet. That kind of makes sense. Um, she's been married three times. Okay. 
uh, even ate one of her husbands when she got bored with him. Yep. Seems to track. Her current husband. Yep. Lepa Laludi. Okay. Lepa Ludi. It's said that he is lazy and mostly stays at home in the cave. Sure. Some places say that he's the one at home preparing the stew for the children to go into. All right. Uh, so of, he's definitely complicit. Yep. Out of all the marriages, yeah. Gulia has had 13 kids herself. He's put it away. Yep. The Yule Lads. How? It- They're called the Yule Lads. They've got their own kind of- The Yule Lads. Yeah. They've got their own kind of legend and stories to them, right? So- It's like Eshes at Christmas. <laughs> We're going to get into them in a second. They're pretty cool too. Right. I, I, I can't wait for you to hear these. Now- I don't really want to go over their Icelandic names because they're just- Yeah, tough. tough. But I've got yep. the English translations, right? Okay. They all have a specific prank that they're meant to do. Oh, nice. And um, the English names pretty much cover what that prank is. Yeah. So the Senior f- whoopee cushion. <laughs> it's, it, that's pretty much what it is. So pretty much- uh, So we got the first one, sheep coat clod. Okay. Um, and they come at specific times. So some right. come on just like first, like each day, another one comes and then they yep. leave 12 So is the idea later. that they're like pranking everyone or are they just yeah. pranking some people? Pranking everyone. So okay. what do you think sheep coat clod does? So I'm assuming it's wool coats and then- Yeah, pretty much. He, he harasses sheep. Oh, all right. But is, he's impaired by his stiff peg legs. So okay. he's not very good at harassing <laughs> sheep because he's got two peg legs. Like a baby walking. Uh, the next one is gully gawk. Right. So he just goes down the gully and yeah. gawks at people. Yeah, hides in gullies. Right. Um, oh, so he just hides, hides in, gully. in gullies. Not really necessarily doing anything. Waiting for opportunity to sneak into the cow shed and steal milk. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Stubby. <laughs> He's uh, abnormally short. Steals pans to eat the crust left on him. Okay. Spoon liquor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's spoon liquor do? Um, steals and licks wooden spoons. Yep. Is extremely thin due to malnourished. Oh, yeah. Malnutrition. <laughs> Pot scraper. <laughs> Bowl liquor. <laughs> Goes well with spoon liquor. Yep. Door slammer. Oh, okay. He likes to slam doors in the oh, night. does he? Yep. Okay. Yep. Sky gobbler. <laughs> <laughs> so- Sky is S-K-Y-R, which is like an Icelandic yogurt, just to clarify that up. But it's still still funny. Sky Gobbler. Because he's a Sky Gobbler. <laughs> Sausage Swiper. <laughs> Window Peeper. Oh, no, my sausage. <laughs> yeah, no, that's his prank. He's, window Peeper. His prank is to hide in the rafters. Yeah. That sausage is going to be your smoked. sausage, Window Peepers out there. <laughs> <laughs> and Sky Gobbler's in there too. I mean, the Icelandic names have- blah, 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 blah. They've got a better ring to it, but this is what they translate. No, so. they don't. What? I guarantee you they don't. <laughs> They're not they better than Scott. <laughs> Sco- okay. It's sausage snatcher. <laughs> the Icelandic name for Sky Gobbler is Sky Gobbler. Sky Gobbler. It's got the umlauts and stuff about it, so I'm probably pronouncing that. Uh, what, 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 what did you like? Sausage Swiper? Sausage Swiper. Oh, Kransky Snatch. <laughs> <laughs> But Junka Nakin here. Okay, so the last one I said was Window Peeper. What do you think's coming next? So give, just give us a shot. I don't know. It'll, it'll be like like butt sniffer or something. Oh, you're so close. Oh, is it something sniffer? Yeah, doorway sniffer. <laughs> <laughs> what? He has an abnormally large nose and an acute sense of smell, which he uses to locate oh. leaf bread. Oh, this could be me. Uh, second to last is Meat Hook. Okay. He uses a hook to steal meat. All right. And candle stealer. Okay. Is the so last it seems like a, a few of them are, they're more nuisance than prank. Yeah. Like candle stealer, yeah. meat hooker. They're all on that same kind of level. Mm. Like stealing uh, milk from the cow shed. Yeah. Sniffing your doorways. I think sausage snatch is not, <laughs> that's not good. Is that your favorite? It's not what you want. Ah, uh, Christmas morning. My sausage! <laughs> oh no, my sausage! Oh! Mein Wiener dog. <laughs> this is Iceland, not Germany. Whatever. Same sort of area. Oh, let's not forget the family pet boy. Oh, mein Bratwurst. What, um, give us, give us a, a, a check on what kind of pet you reckon the- uh, Chihuahua. Grillia and Lapaludi and the Yule boys have. Pack of Chihuahuas. No, nah, the Yule cat. Okay. Is that, that got you interested, the cat? Yeah. So- 
Tell me more. The Yule Cat had its own kind of story, but it, uh, this is another one of those things where it's kind of all been rolled into this one okay. legend or folklore of yeah, Gruya. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, I know you're a cat poison. 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 I've just combined person and boy together to get poison. Poison. What do you think the Yule Cat does? Like, we've, we've had window sniffers and sausage snatchers. And mm. so what do you reckon the Yule Cat will be up to? He'd be like stealing milk out of bowls and stuff. Okay. Scratching up the carpet. No, this is, this is not one you want to come across. The Yule Cat is a huge and vicious cat who's described as lurking about the snowy countryside during Christmas time and eating people who have not received any new clothes to wear before Christmas Eve. Any new clothes? New clothes. So he's attacking povs. Yeah, so- Or people that have nobody that likes them. So where this has come from- Wow, like life's not hard enough, <laughs> so and then you're like, oh, oh, I need a new shirt. A massive cat the size of like a yeah, minivan. Yeah, getting attacked by a mountain lion because you don't have a new shirt. Uh, so where this has come from, it's like an ancient tradition- It's new underwear, I swear. <laughs> um, accounts of the Yule Cat have only been located as recently as the 19th century. Sure. But the threat of being eaten by the Yule Cat was- was used by farmers as an incentive for their workers to finish processing the autumn wool before Christmas. Right. So it's kind of like finish the wool, um, like yeah. make yourself a shirt. Yeah, pretty much. The people yeah. who did their job got new clothes, and you wouldn't get eaten by the Yule cat. So, jeez, um, man, people must not had much to do back in those days, eh? Like, if somebody said to me, "Oh, you better finish your work, or there'll be a giant cat <laughs> comes and scratches yeah. you to death," well, I'd be like. Finish your work so. and get new clothes. Because, yeah. yeah. If you don't have a new pair of socks on Christmas Eve. Uh, the cat has alternatively been described as merely eating away the food of ones without new clothes before Christmas. So you either get oh, eaten okay, by that's the a cat better. or the cat yeah. eats your food. You're left hungry. So Grillia and the Yule Lads have also shown up in pop culture lately. Yep. 2018, uh, they were in the holiday episode of The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Okay. You know that show? That's the, like, like I think it was the Netflix reboot yeah. of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah. I do. I remember watching a couple episodes of that. Not much. Yeah. Um, there's, there's some other Christmas weirdos out there as well. Like, um, yeah, I've the, seen a few. Yeah, there's a French, there's a story of a French butcher, Pierre Filtard. Um, he lured three boys into his shop where he killed, chopped and salted them. Ugh. Why? St. Nicholas came to the rescue, uh, resurrected the boys, and now Pierre serves as St. Nicholas, uh, serves St. Nicholas, punishing, like dispensing punishment to bad kids, much like Krampus. Oh, okay. Um, so St. So Nick's got a few of these bad boys. Yeah, so you see a theme happening here. We've, yeah. got, we've got one who's- Don't sound like he's collecting a group. <laughs> Just saying. Um, he sees you when you're sleeping. And that's, that's what I've got for Christmas uh, Cheeky Tales. Um, yeah. So how's your creep factor now? Like, is it? Oh, look, it's all over the place, isn't it? The Santa Claus creep factor. He knows when you're. That's still. Sleeping. He knows I'm, when you're awake. I'm peaked on the fact that Santa's a creep. Um, I think there's just a lot more fun to be had in Central Europe there. <laughs> Their Christmas traditions. Yeah. yeah. Sausage snatcher. That's probably up there. Doorway sniffer. Like doorway sniffer. What, what kind of prank is that? Just, yeah. There's bread over there. <laughs> okay. It. Yeah, it's the kitchen. What do you? Wasn't it like the doorway sniffer was sniffing for bread, right? Um, leaf bread, yeah. Yeah. So, like, there's bread over there. Well, yeah, it's my kitchen. What do you want from me? Oh. I'm assuming, Pranked. I'm assuming he's also going to snatch the bread as well. Oh, but at that point, like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm all about St. Nick. Patron saint of everything, by the sounds of it. Of a lot of things, yep. Yeah. Patron saint of putting your clothes away after you fold them on the line. Chuck that down on the list as well, man, yeah. as well. I'm just- so, so specific in yeah. what your patron saints of patron saint of that feeling when you're going to sleep and you're just about to fall asleep and your body's like, nah, you're falling and you jolt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Mm. No one wants to be a patron saint of that. No. So, um, yeah, that was fun. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Um, be good. Or, um, so Grillia or Krampus doesn't come and visit you. Uh, have a happy new year. We won't have another episode before. No, we won't. The new year. So we'll yeah. see you in the new year. This is the- uh, Closing out 2021 in style. Last Cheeky Tales we hear all year. Yeah, that's right. Well, maybe not, because you could probably go back and listen to some other ones. And you maybe you should. Um, so we're going to have to keep this in mind. Keep keep this in mind for next year, boy, when we yep. come at Christmas time again. Christmas again. We'll have, a, we'll have to see if we can dive into some European Christmas traditions and see what- 
Yeah. But they have some weird stuff that they've got. Yeah, let's do that. I like that. You're not going to race the rat by the end of the year, are you? No, nah, probably not. Have you got a rat for me? I'm, I have not are, sourced a rat. Are you sourcing the rat? Uh, I could probably source the rat. Okay. I don't want to. It's a lot of admin work and I don't like that. <laughs> admin work to get a rat. But oh, well, where do you get a racing rat from? Are, are you going to get a, a pedigree racing rat? I just don't know if that's Or are you just going to go to the pet shop and get a rat? I feel like just go to the pet shop and get a rat is the best option. Okay. I mean, but then, like, then. Peter's going to get involved, and oh, I just don't want to deal I'm with it. I'm hurting him. the rat. I'm just racing it. Uh, just, I gotta, yeah. I got to catch right. it, don't I? Look, I got to get the socials buzzing about this rat race. Yeah, it's not um, happening unless we've got people wanting us. The, yeah. the people don't want it. I haven't heard anything. The people are not wanting was, the rat yeah. race. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll get it, I'll get it to happen. <laughs> anyway, find us on socials. Uh, you got the old sure. Facebook, the old Instagram, the old Twitter. Um, we enjoy sharing our podcast with you so you should enjoy sharing it with your mates gift um gift the gift of cheeky tales to a loved one this christmas it's really oh, that cheap. sounded like a really bad infomercial didn't it it's really cheap and it takes <laughs> minimum effort so if you've run out of time this is the gift oh the give. wife will love it yeah i guarantee <laughs> that she will um yeah and share us around genuinely because uh it would be nice to uh see our listeners grow uh, I'd like to get a little community going. That'd be pretty cool. Um, and it would be nice to, you know, have more people to talk to when to we do the podcast. Speak in their e-holes. Yeah. The e-holes. Ear holes. I feel like you said e-holes. No, I said ear holes. Play listen back the tape. Yeah, play it back. Listen to it. I said ear holes. Play it back. All right. So you've heard John say e-holes or not. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, what a way to wrap up the year, boy. Yep. Yeah. I uh, thank you all for listening this year. We've really enjoyed it. Starting, um, starting off our journey into the world of podcasting. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, it has been very fun to become a content creator. Hope you've enjoyed it. We will be back. Uh, we're not taking a break. Nope. Well, we might. I don't know. We Who are knows? We're taking one week break. We'll be back in it's uh, two weeks. Normal time. No, we're taking a week break. We'll be back the week after. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, regular schedule is regular what we're trying yeah. to say. <laughs> That's what we're saying. We'll say, um, oh, I can't even think of what the date will be the next one. Third, I think. 3rd of January. Yeah. Very good. Or the 2nd. I don't know. It'll be someday. Someday. Yeah. It'll be a Tuesday. A Tuesday in a fortnight from when this one comes out. Too bad if you just decide to change the date, like, in the next two weeks. Oh, oh actually, I want to do it on Wednesdays now. <laughs> anyway, um, everyone, Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. New Year. From all of us here at Cheeky Tales, which is the two of us. <laughs> and Sean. Sean. I'm sure Sean sends yep. his wishes for Cheeky Tales. I'm sure that he both. does. You know, the, the, all the feedback I've had, from, I know we're wrapping up, but all the feedback I've had from the Sean episode is, man, it was really funny how irritated Sean got. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I've heard as well. <laughs> Just every time we tried, he was trying to move the story along, we're like, ah, no! <laughs> what about his kilt coming off? No, 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 bad horse. Uh, oh, there's some quick highlights from the year of yeah. details. Uh, <laughs> bad horse. And- Hot bomber summer. <laughs> Um, still the most underrated joke. Anyway, let's wrap it up before we continue going on for too long. I'm going to say Merry Christmas again. Ah, <sighs> no, I'm going to skip that. And good night. Um, Klaus, what was it? The Krampuschnaut. Krampuschnaut. Happy Krampuschnaut. Happy Krampuschnaut. Krampuschnaut. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone.